right, we'll get started. Where's the little record icon? Oh, there it is, I see, okay. So, hey, this is the uh, the volume populators uh, meeting for the Kubernetes uh, SIG storage group. Um, today, I wanted to uh, review the KEP. I've, I've updated the KEP over the last week with all of the changes based on the prototyping work from last year in November and December. Um, so the, the current version of the KEP reflects what we actually want to do for 120. I wanted to thank Xing for doing the first review of it. Um, a lot of it was like typos and stuff, but there were two specific things that, um, well, I don't know if we should, should we go over the KEP first for those that are not familiar with it? Um, or should we jump right to the, the problem areas that need discussion? Um, so Xing, I know, I know you've read it. Yeah. Elliot and Sean, do you want to go over the whole thing or um, just discuss the problem areas? I think I've read uh, this before, but I'm not sure how many updates you have made. So, so the, the last version of it that existed for 120 referred to a validating webhook that would reject PVCs that had invalid data sources. And so basically I removed all that language, replaced it with the new language about this new, what we're calling the data source validator controller. And I just explained that, you know, instead of rejecting p object creation, it just sends events. Um, and the, the other, let me see, the other major change, how can I get the PR to actually show what it looks like? Well, here, I know what I can do. If I drag this over right here, um, is that visible? Yeah. Okay, so so yeah, this is just this is what it looks like in the IDE. Um, oh, okay. I thought this looks different. Okay. Well, I mean, this is this is how uh, this is how GoLand shows oh, it. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, it's actually, if you also go to that PR, you do the view, it also shows that like the whatever you have on the right hand side. So it's okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. This is good actually. We can see both. Yeah. 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 I, I, I like this uh, this markdown editor that they have mm -hmm. in GoLand. Um, it's nice. So the um, yeah the, the big changes I would say were in the proposal itself. So again, I, I explained here it's a controller, not a webhook. Um, and then I, I added a section where I go into detail about. Um, there's going to be four different sources of feedback that the end user will get about his PVCs. So I want to make it clear that, that the, the goal of all of this is so that the end user knows what's going on with his PVCs. Um, you know, ultimately, machines are just going to sit around waiting for stuff to bind, right? That, that's, that's all they care about is, did the PVC get bound? Can I use it? Can my pod start up? Um, all, of these, all of these events... Um, or for people who are trying to debug why something went wrong, um, or for an impatient user who just wants to know what the system is up to. Um, so I, I went into detail on all of the feedback that users can expect to get after this, after this kept, uh, is completed. Um, and I'm still punting on uh, exactly how populators work, and I'm saying that will be a separate kept. Of, of course, we have discussed how populators will actually work, um, but but that I don't think is that that's sort of out of scope for the the main Kubernetes API. All all we need is to get the the data source or the any any data source feature gate moved to beta in order to move things forward in Kubernetes proper, and then of course all the actual population stuff is going to be out of tree. Whether we actually need a cap for the out of tree stuff or not. I don't know. I'm, I'm happy to write another cap for the, you know how populators work, but I wanted to point out that this this document doesn't explain the mechanism of population. Um, it just explains that th that the expected result is it looks like any other data source, or you know, it look, looks like exactly what happens if you specify a data source of like a snapshot or a, another PVC. It just gets created and binds, and you're ready to go. Um, this section is all the same. Um, there's some mitigations I think is the same. I don't think I had to change anything here. Um, I had to update the test plan to explain that what we're looking for now is whether events get generated or not. Oh, and I missed some periods here. Pop those in. 
Um, so, so Shing, I, I uh, instead of saying ignores the PVC, I said causes no events. Um, I, that's more neutral language because I agree that saying ignores sounds negative. Um, yeah. So I neutral think the language main, main thing that I see is that now I just realized one thing. Um, since uh, you are not going to use the sidecar, right? So which means we don't have that matrix mechanism by anymore. So I don't know if this is a problem for the. the no, the, the, the sidecar is still involved. So so the. Uh, but it's not. But. So 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 this one uh, number three mentions that the sidecar. What does sidecar um, do? For every PVC under the responsibility of the side driver, the provisioner sidecar for that PVC will emit an event explaining that the sidecar is not taking action on the PVC, assuming the data source is something that a populator is responsible for and not a PVC or volume snapshot, which the sidecar is responsible for. So right, but you are, I mean, the the control the new controller, I guess the I guess the thing is the new controller will not have any metrics, right? So I think that's something uh normally that is required. So I don't know, uh, like for, for us, right, for snapshotter. I know we added that in the snapshot controller later. It's like before GA, we, we must add that. So I don't know if uh, now they have this uh, PRR review thing. I don't know if they make this a regular requirement for like beta beta case. So, we so, don't, so I, maybe I don't understand what you're asking. Oh, so so, so the, the metrics basically like for uh, like if you have some controller or something in your new feature, mm -hmm. that supposedly it should have some metrics, right? So oh, met, met, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, you said metrics. I, I thought oh. you were saying matrix. <laughs> I was trying to figure out what kind of matrix you're talking about. Okay, this is my pronunciation. Yes, okay. yes. Uh, so, so absolutely, I want to talk about metrics. That's that's on okay. the agenda. Um, okay. But sure. uh, but there was one sure. other issue that you pointed to that I wanted to, to get to okay. first. Okay. Sure, that is fine. Yeah, I just I I just to me that seems to be the the main thing that I just realized last night when I was reading this. I said, oh, this seems to be new because I think. Previously, it was we were talking about a maybe we we're talking about sidecar or something. So I thought sidecar would work, but now we have a new controller that's not have metrics. So I don't met sorry metrics, <laughs> and yeah. I don't know what is the you know requirement for the this new you know this new production resume history. I don't know if they because they they are asking about this all over the place, right? It's like yeah yeah no, the, the, they're asking about me. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a there's a ton of stuff in a yeah. in the feature enable in the product readiness review questionnaire. Yeah, so that's why I don't know if they, if we don't have that in for beta, I'm not sure if that's a problem. So I just, I just want to bring this up. I'm not sure. So this is the first time because I know that for, for snapshot or for snapshot controller, well, I think Sidecar has that, but snapshot controller, we didn't add that until before GA. Uh, but I don't know if, uh, you know, now they have a different requirement or what for this. Uh, yeah, and I did get a comment from one of the, uh, one of the upstream people mm -hmm. about needing to create a different file maybe i need to move all the prr stuff into a different file um so oh no 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 it's okay i can show you what what they mean no you don't have to put that in. Okay. this is fine this is there here you just need to create another small tiny file like a three line file that include uh the name of your uh of this pr another pr this uh what is that the issue number cap. Name, like cap number and also cap. who reviewed this who approved this that's it i can show you what what but but have. we have we have kept uh, YAML. No, there's a, no, there's a third one. I can okay. show. I I will just send you just like after this, I will send you uh like what I have for the volume house. I added that already. So just a tiny little file. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you I need to do that. All but, of this but, readme stuff should st still stay in the same file. Okay. So so the specific contents of the PRR that I wanted to talk about first was the. Uh, talking about disablement slash rollback. So if someone does install this feature and they decide they don't like the way it works and they want to disable the feature gate, um, the, the PRR, the, the, the product, what we, the production readiness review asks you to explain how that's going to go. So my understanding is if you flip the feature gate off, and I guess that requires bouncing your Kubernetes services, um, what will happen is that the the old code in the admission controller will be enabled again and then every time a a, a pvc gets loaded from from etcd the the admission controller code will run on it and it will drop the data source fields that is my understanding of what happens so i wanted to ask if other people had the same understanding that if 
if you turn the, the feature gate off so that the old admission controller logic is re-enabled and, and you have stuff in your etcd database where you have data sources set to something that doesn't pass the old admission controller logic will it just drop it as if it was never there um because if, if you guys don't know then i'm gonna have to do an experiment to find out i think it would be worth doing an experiment my understanding oh. is that if the if etcd has something that is not valid then it's not going to pass through validation again so you have to right right but the admission controller implementation for data sources was weird because instead of mm -hmm. rejecting the request it just zeros out the fields and then accepts it I see. And and it, it's always been a strange implementation in the API server, but that's that's it, it today if the feature gate is off and you put garbage in the data source field, it accepts your request and just drops the garbage. Um, also, does it actually just create like an empty volume basically? Yeah, it'll just create an empty volume and, and pretend you never put garbage in the data source field, which is really strange, but that's how it works. And so I'm guessing that in a rollback, that same logic would just get invoked and it would just pretend that your data source fields were empty, um, even if they had previously been set to something when the feature gate was enabled. Uh, of course, if, if the PVC is bound to something, it's not going to matter because nobody looks at the data source after the PVC is bound. So it's, it's just historical information at that point. But um, if you had any like unbound PVCs hanging around and then you shut down Cube API server and disable the feature gate and then started it up, I imagine that it would just zero out those fields and then you'd get a bunch of empty PVCs um, like you would today if you had never enabled it. So um, I may need to do the experiment to determine exactly how this behaves if, if nobody knows, um, but I was hoping somebody would know how, how that works. Um, Okay, um, so that's an action item for me to go do that experiment. So the other one that was the one that Shing brought up about metrics. And let me see if I can find, where do they put the metrics? What section is it in? Monitoring requirements? Ah, here we are. Are there any missing metrics that will be useful to have? Um, so yeah, I wanted to, I just wanted to get some suggestions. Like what, um, what type of metrics might make sense for this controller? That I can put in here because because remember that the purpose of this controller is just to give you feedback on PVCs that look like they might not bind ever. The actual populators will probably have all kinds of metrics on what they're doing because they're doing real work to go populate a volume. And so they'll have like operation counts and timers and how long it took and how many failures and how many successes there were. But um, this thing is just uh, just you know, informing you when you have suspicious looking data sources. I guess maybe just a counter. A counter of how many, how many data, how many PVCs had suspicious data sources or? Yeah. Kind of... Someone can monitor that and see if it changes over time potentially. Okay. Counter for number of PVCs with uh data sources that what, what's the right word to use i can just say invalid invalid, invalid. yeah but I, I wanted to be clear about both. data sources that it considers invalid um then you probably just want to count both both valid and invalid since you are going to count anyway Valid data sources. Okay. Okay. So yeah, we we can just count how many go by. Um, what so, about will there be like any failed operations? Is this a, always going to be successful? Like for example, right. we talk about create warning rate right? failed and uh, successful, but this one validation. Yeah, this, this one doesn't do any work other than talking to Kubernetes. The only thing that can fail is like a Kubernetes API. Okay. And, and we're only doing gets and then event creations, or we're doing, you know, lists, gets, watches, and create registration of events. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we don't try to update or, or modify anything in this controller. Um, okay, so we, we can get a bunch of counts, um, and I'll just figure out how to do that. The, the, uh, 
my only concern there is statelessness requirements. So like this thing doesn't remember what PVCs it has complained about in the past. Basically every time it sees an update to a PVC, it examines the data source. And if it looks invalid, it just re-emits the same old event. And so if, if you have lots of controllers touching PVCs, it'll just emit the same event over and over again. And that that's fine as we discussed earlier because the Q Cube API server will coalesce those events down to just one entry with a, with a repeat count that'll keep incrementing. Um, but if we're trying to collect metrics, that implies some sort of ability to remember which ones we have counted and which ones we have not counted, right? Or, or, is, or is it acceptable for when controllers restart, they just restart all their metrics counting at zero and double count the stuff they counted before? I think it's fine to be imprecise here. Uh, the interesting thing would be kind of change in value over time. So you can see a steady state. And then if you see a spike, you can go and look into oh, what's causing this spike. It would be nice if it was all deduped and you know it wasn't just- Yeah, well, I'm problem. just trying to, to think about like, is there something in the API that we can hook into to determine if, if this is the first time we've, we're noticing a PVC and complaining about it, or if it's just a, you know the PVC got updated and showed up in the watch again. Yeah. Um, like, like if for, for one running instance, we could maintain a map in memory of which ones we had counted, but then if, if it ever restarted, you'd lose your, your state. Um, right. And there's no place to stash that state. Uh, your counter would go back down to zero though, right? If the pod restarted? Or well, I, I actually don't know how the metric system works. Yeah, I, I guess that's another point is uh, if, if the metrics themselves are just in memory uh, data that has to get scraped, then yeah, a restart of the pod would also reset all those to zero. Um, so maybe that's acceptable is, is that when it restarts, everything just goes back to zero and we start counting again. And it's up to someone to, you know, whoever's scraping it to realize that a restart occurred. If that's how, if that's how metrics are handled in other, I, I just don't have a lot of experience with, with how we do metrics in general. Um, so I'm happy to, to do that implementation. That, that will be a little bit of new code in this controller, uh, which we'll need to get sorted out soon if we're aiming for 121. But yeah, I can do that. So that'll be another action item for me is uh, figure out how to do the metrics and get, get some at least stateless metrics in there. Um, and then we can avoid double counting for at least that invocation of the controller. So if, if the same PVC comes in twice, we'll only count it once. Um, that's easy to do in memory. Okay, um, so uh, I've got two action items now, uh, and the and uh, I don't know if there was anything else to cover in oh, in the kep itself. We got the oh, and I need to do the um, that create that other three line YAML file, and Shing will help me with that. Um, and that's it. Um, I guess I will make those changes and push another update to my PR. Uh, who, who else do we need to get reviews from to get through the, uh, the KEP review process and get it merged for 121? I mean, as I understand it, it's production review, API review, and seg review, so. Okay. Well, do we still need a, with AK review is all set, right? That we don't really have much. Well, the, t Tim Tim approved the flavor of it that was in 118, okay. the alpha flavor. We don't, we don't um, need to use any new API change, so that should be fine. Okay. Right. There's no new API change. Well, there's, there's the new CRD that we want to add. Is that considered an API oh, change? That probably is an API. Uh, you probably want to ping him just to, to take a look. Okay. Um, so so yeah. After I after I have it in a uh, good shape, I'll um. Saad, you're an approver. Tim Hawkins is a is a yep. approver. Um, I'll, I have uh. David Eads for the uh. For the my PRR approver. At least he was last time around. I don't know if he's still doing that work, uh, but I'll ping him. He's still, yeah, he's still around. He just did my. Order okay, house. okay. Yeah, he he was very friendly when I approached him like three months ago. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, and then we'll uh, try to get it reviewed uh, and merged. Um, Shin, can you remind me what when exactly is the deadline for that? 
Uh, oh, it's next Tuesday, actually. It's coming. Okay, so I've got seven seven days basically to mm -hmm. to wrap this up. I, th I think I think it'll be easy because um yeah the, the the remaining updates I can do today. I can get out review requests and then talk to anyone that, that needs convincing or, or have any discussions we need to have later this week. Yeah, just shoot me an email if you need my eyes on anything. Okay. Okay. Um, so that's that's it for for uh, this week. Then I'm just gonna try to get the cap merged before the next meeting. Um, and and yeah. All right. I'll, thank I'll, you. And do those action items I mentioned. No, I'll, I'll write those down after after the meeting. Okay. So if, unless anyone has anything else, uh, we'll we'll end for today. All right. Take care. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thanks, everybody.